Okay, we've got, uh, got our two pieces now. Based on the last one, we've got uh, both pieces cleaned up. For the most part, should allow everything to seal up nice and tight. No burrs or uh, dirt and debris and whatnot. We've got most of, the, most of the rubber residue. Still a little bit left, but not that big a deal. Should be fine. Um, at this stage now, we're ready to start. We're going to start actually with the, uh, the bigger piece of the rim. And you need to determine at this point, based on your tire, which side of the tire you want to face in versus which side you want to face out. In the case, um, in our case, we're actually dealing with the Interco Traxxas MT. It's a mud train tire, but it's a black wall with the same design on both sides. So in our instance, it doesn't make a difference which side we lay up. But just something to note if you've got white walls or uh, white lettering or anything like that that you want to face out, that's the side that's going to face down at this point. So. Um, to begin with, obviously uh, the most essential part of this being the, uh, the split rims design with the beadlock is we got to start by getting the beadlock inserted into the tire. As we saw previously, this is the beadlock portion. It goes inside and this is going to fit inside each of the lips of your tire here. And it's a little tricky to get it in, but uh, essentially kind of like reverse of the process, you're going to kind of squeeze it together in order to get it down on one side. And then we're going to slowly kind of work it down until we can get this lip pushed down inside the tire. Helps to kind of work it from both sides. side started. A bit more effort than I expected, but like I said sometimes it takes a little bit of working it back and forth. Lay it down. Back down flat. And at this stage it may take, you probably don't want to get your fingers in here, it might be a little bit tight. If you have a uh, flat blade screwdriver, this can kind of help. Be careful not to obviously get it anywhere where it's going to puncture through the tire. But this can kind of help to brace up against the inside and, and you can work the, uh, the beadlock in underneath the rim this way. It's a little easier than getting your fingers in there and trying to work it back and forth. done with this process, which you may have to do it on the bottom as well, the beadlock should be even all the way around. It should be nice and smooth lining up with your, uh, your outer bead. Put this up here. Notice we're outside the bead on this side as well. So we can kind of work this down. to allow it to, to fit nice and neat underneath that rim. So this, this step takes a little bit of a little bit of finagling sometimes, but just tap it gently with a hammer to get it lined up. Done. Like I 
I said, should be should be even all the way around, not sticking out anywhere, so that your uh, your bead lock lines up with the outer bead. Should be that way on both sides. Make sure it's not sticking out anywhere. And again, because we flipped it a couple times, make sure that the inside, what's going to face on the inside, is up. And that's our starting point. The other thing to note, your air holes, you've got one on 180 degrees apart from each other, one on either side. And this is kind of key at this point. In order for air to get down through your front valve stem here, you'll notice that the valve stem sits right in between two of your mounting bolts. So this valve stem needs to line up with this hole. Since we're putting in the big piece first, starting from the back side, what we essentially need to do is make sure, make sure that this hole is sitting right in between two of your mounting studs as this is slipped down in. So it's, you gotta kinda wiggle it and make sure it sits right in the center there. If it doesn't, you're not gonna get air into this thing, so you'll figure it out pretty quick. I like to line it up actually, take one of your, uh, your starter studs here and put it right in between one of the long bolts and one of the short bolts and line that up like so. And just keep it centered as you drop this down into place. Just like so. Easiest way to get this actually down a little bit further, just to take it and stand on it, kind of bounce. This helps to kind of seat the rim. Makes it easier to pull together on the other side. Now we're going to flip it and look just to make sure that we're still lined up. We've got a, an air slot here in between these two bolts and another slot here in between these two bolts. So we're good there. Next part of the assembly, we're actually going to take the top piece and we're going to settle down over, the, over this back piece. But before we do that, because this is an existing rim that's been on, we're going to want to extract this O-ring. This is fairly flat after two plus years of sitting in there, so chances are it's not going to seal up too good once we put them back together. Just kind of toss that aside. Grab ourselves a new O-ring. And these O-rings are actually available through uh, a few different vendors online that you can contact. The easiest way, if, uh, if you don't know where the vendors are, is just to visit Hutchinson's website or contact one of the sales reps at Hutchinson and they can provide you with a, a point of contact as far as who they uh, retail through and they can send you out some of these things. They're, they're not, uh, not cheap by any means. This whole setup is not cheap, but uh, your O-rings are going to run you probably over 20 bucks a piece. So it's, it's not something you want to order, order 100 of, but uh, Again, this is your main sealing component, so it's it's kind of a critical piece. What we're going to do is we're going to reinsert this into this little track into the channel here. I'm not sure if you can see that from here, but there's a there's a channel that runs all the way around the inside of the front plate, and this can be a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to actually take the gloves off here just so I, I make sure I'm not getting a bunch of debris on the O-ring. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Vaseline and we're going to lubricate this ring just to give it a little extra stickiness as well as help it seal up once we uh, assemble both pieces together. So I'm going to take the gloves off, clean this up, and uh, I'll be back in a second.